Okay, it's um, one o'clock, so I'll call to order the Green Mountain Care Board's meeting of February 8th, 2023. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, today we have one primary agenda topic, which is the 2024 Standard Qualified Health Plan designs and a potential vote. Um, before we get there, I want to hope that everyone's safe and well. I know there's been some um, issues at the schools and I hope that everyone's children are safe and doing well. I know a lot of us have young kids and so um, I just want to share that uh, sentiment. Um, I'll turn it to Susan Barrett for the executive director's report and then we'll take up the minutes from January 1st. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A few brief announcements. Um, our, uh, in, in addition to our regularly scheduled meetings uh, on Wednesdays at 1 p.m., next week we have a general, I mean, a primary care advisory group meeting that starts at 5 p.m. It is via Teams with the physical location for those who can't access Teams um, at 144 State Street in Montpelier. Um, I also wanted to thank our general advisory group for meeting this Monday. I believe that it was. Um, we had a very robust discussion on some of the work that the board is doing um, with AHS on Act 167 of 2022. Um, we don't have any public comment period uh, periods open except for the ongoing public comment where we're accepting any public comment regarding the next all payer model agreement. Um, we share those with AHS and the governor's office as they are um, leading the implementation of the current all payer model and negotiations on a potential next model. So with that, I will turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, we'll turn to the minutes from uh... February 1st, 2023. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move we approve the minutes from February 1st, 2023. Second. So definitively. I like it. These must be really great minutes this week. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, and the vote is unanimous and the minutes are approved. Um, with that, we'll turn it over to Dana Houlihan in connection with the uh, 2024 Standard Qualified Health Plan designs. Mr. Houlihan, how are you? Nice to see you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us back. Um, so today uh, we have prepared, or I say we, Wakely, um, at our direction, has prepared some contextual information that we thought would be helpful for the board. This doesn't introduce any new proposals. It's really just providing a little bit more color around some of the um, segments of the presentation that, that um, could just use a bit more detail. So uh, we're going to start with that and then uh, come back to me for um, an overview of the January 2023 enrollment as it looks on the exchange. So Darren or Julie, I'd like to turn it to you. Yeah, could you uh, switch me to a present our presenter? I know we had to do that last week too, so I could share my screen. Apologies, I don't do that. Yeah, no problem. Where's your name? Perfect, that worked, thank you. Oh, thank you, someone did it. Yeah, so just wanted to kind of touch on a few things from last week where we felt like we probably should have included a little more detail to provide some context to kind of what was changing with the AV calculator and what made it different this year versus kind of a typical year and how that kind of impacted decision making when putting the standard plan designs together um, both this year and kind of going forward and, and how we think about those things. Um, so just, just a quick outline, this shouldn't take long at all. Um, so going back to the, the 2024 federal AV calculator with the changes to the logic, um, I don't think I spent enough time on this. So the way the calculator was set up in the past was that if a plan had say a $3,000 deductible and a $50 copay on specialist office visits um, with the deductible not applying, it would count every single specialist office visit copay towards that deductible. Um, not just towards the loop. So if you had four specialist office visits and then, you know, a really big inpatient stay, you pay $200 of copays and then $2,800 of deductible. 
Whereas in practice, you know, every plan I've ever seen would not accrue those copays towards the deductible. You pay your two hundred dollars of copays, you'd have your stay, you'd pay three hundred three thousand dollar deductible. Um, did this change drove? Let me see. <laughs> this change increased actuarial values as calculated in the calculator because they're accruing all these copays towards deductibles, which means it hits your deductible sooner. It's a richer plan. So this year, when they kind of corrected that so that the AV calculator was in line with you know, the way pretty much every plan actually adjudicates that dropped AV calculator values down, um, you know, in some cases substantially depending on the plan um, that kind of gave us this one year break in like the steady uptick of, you know, AV calculated AVs. And let's see. Yeah, I'll send this one for a second. Um, and that, that uptake is just due to kind of the trend in claims. So as we mentioned, you know, this year they're applying 5% medical trend, 8% pharmacy trend. So every year as these claims kind of tick up and up and up, you know, a $3,000 deductible gets more and more rich because more and more claims all over that $3,000 trend. Um, so there's kind of that, that steady ratcheting up of actuarial values with the same plan design. This year we kind of get that one year break in it um, because of that change in logic. Um, so that change, it's not anything that's impacting you know, standard plan designs, anything that's impacting how anything would actually be implemented on the Vermont side. It's just the logic in this federal calculator has changed, which gave us a little more wiggle room kind of on a one-time basis. Um, okay, um, so then, so going back to kind of this slide of what we're actually seeing. So, you know, gold stayed mostly the same. Silver, we saw that decrease. You know, we had a bunch of plans that changed kind of differently that we would normally impact. So we wanted to put a slide together of kind of what we what we normally actually see. So we've got the, the plans broken down off to the left here. You know, min and max, probably not as impactful, but this is kind of the average year over year change we typically see in AV for each of these plans. Um, you know, this is going back to, I want to say 20, 2016. Um, so we have a, a substantial amount of years of AV calculator updates. So on average, every year they release a new calculator, the gold plan design goes up 1.3% before we change anything. Um, and if that bumps it up past that 82%, now it's out of compliance and we have to reduce benefits to get it back into compliance. You know, the silver deductible plan, for whatever reason, seems to be especially impacted by these kind of year over year updates, an average change of almost 1.7%. So again, every year you, you have this you know, really big ratcheting effect that's happening that we have to counteract through plan designs. You know, this year, you know, the actual change we saw, you know, was obviously dramatically different for some of these plans. You know, silver deductible, that plan has a lot of copays. So this change was especially impactful. You know, the silver HDHP, you know, got a lot of copays, mostly just deductible MOOP. Didn't really change the story at all on that one or the bronze without our limit plan. Um, so, you know, that was, Definitely very helpful this year. You know, there were a couple plans where, you know, we didn't have to increase the deductible at all um, because we kind of had this one time, one time benefit of their change in logic. Um, but just wanted to spend a little more time on that to kind of, you know, show the average changes year over year. Just, you know, that's the federal value increasing. That's kind of what we're, what we have to, to counteract just to stay in compliance with, with AV ranges. Um, we also had another question on just what deductibles um, applied to in the different plans. So just put together a quick table of kind of where the deductible is waived or applies. Um, so platinum, gold, silver deductible, pretty standard way for preventive office visits. That's primary care and specialist, your urgent care and your ambulance. Um, and then drug is waived for generic scripts. Um, and then on, you know, the rest of the plans, mostly it's just waived for preventive. Um, and then wellness and you know, goes between just wellness scripts or generic scripts, um, wellness and generic for some of the other ones. So I think this plan design is probably the one that caused the most confusion, the, the bronze deductible plan with the pharmacy limit. Um, so we have the medical deductible is only way for preventive, um, but then we have all these categories with that have copays. Um, so in this case, you know, the members are responsible up to 6450 and then between 64 and 9450, um, you know, they, they get some of the benefit. They just have the copays instead of having, you know, the the coinsurance rates. And then once they hit ninety four fifty, obviously they're done with cost sharing. Um, so, you know, this is definitely a somewhat confusing plan design because we have all these copays, but then you know, on the medical side, it's only waived for preventive. Um, 
And then on the pharmacy side, it is waived for, for generic drugs. Um, so just wanted to run through that kind of plan design quick because I think that one's that one's a little confusing. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that helped kind of clear things up a little bit around the AV calculators. I know that can get get very technical with kind of the updates they're doing year over year, but thought it was worth taking the time to explain that a little more and kind of show that the average changes. Any questions on that? One point to add too, it's not it's not that the deductible is waived precisely, but as of last year, remember we made the um, design change to have the first three office visits or behavior, behavioral health or um, um, medical office visits at no cost share. So that's in addition to the um, treatment of deductible. But for those first three, we, we um, you know, made that valuable addition. Just want to remind everybody of that. Is there anything else, Mr. Hulan, or are you? Well, I, I can move to the over, overview of enrollment, unless there are questions on this information from Wakely. Oh, oh. Okay, to move on. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Can people see my screen? Not yet. Darren, do you need to stop sharing or am I doing something wrong? I believe I did. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is just an overview of the on exchange enrollment. Um, And this is covered lives, not um, by household. So this uh, first slide just uh, shows it by plan type. And so comparing 2022 covered lives in January to 2023, total enrollment is down about 1,000, just over. Um, you know, comparing this number and this number here. So this is fairly consistent with what Addie mentioned last week that uh, largely we think due to people staying on Medicaid that this is down and that, you know, sometime later in 2023, some unknown number will is likely to transfer from um, Medicaid coverage to qualified health plans. So we'll be watching this closely to see how how that changes. Um, specifically, we were asked about the uh, enrollment in the plans that are impacted by VCSR, that's the 73 and 77% CSR levels. We've got a, just over 1,000 in the 73% um, CSR level 4 and about 2,000 in the 77%. So those two cohorts would be impacted by um, the removal of, of VCSR if that goes forward. So shifting to this color chart, this focuses on the changes in by metal level and plant type year over year. So it's really down in most categories except for bronze, which is slightly up and the uh, no CSR um, silver plan or, or silver plan type um, is is up a bit, but again down a little over a thousand overall. So I hope that's helpful. I really just wanted to provide that in the next month or so we will have the um, next coverage map will come out, which is a broader look at all of the enrollment across different um, across different categories and including the uh, small group and, and issuer direct enrollment. So um, we will certainly share that with the board.
So that's uh, what we had prepared to show today. So um, turn it back to you, I guess, if there are questions or other things that we can uh, we can uh, provide our answer today. Great, um, thank you. And I'll open it up to the board for any questions or comments um, from the board. Um, just go ahead and speak up if you have any questions or comments. Okay. My only comment is I see that you and member Walsh must go to the, uh, have the same shopping experiences. <laughs> Um, I'll turn it to the healthcare advocate for any questions or comments they may have. Hi, uh, Chair Foster. This is Charles Becker, staff attorney with the Office of the Healthcare Advocate. <clears throat> um, just uh, three quick points about the 2024 plan designs. Uh, first, I wanted to just say kudos to Dana Houlihan for running very efficient meetings and to the Wakely team for their clear presentations. <clears throat> it made uh, making some difficult decisions a little bit easier to do. Um, regarding the plan adjustments, I just wanted to say that although those these are really minor adjustments, you know, we're talking about a few hundred dollars in the deductible here, a couple hundred dollars in the MOOP there, some copay adjustments here and there. That's really kind of cold comfort to Vermonters who, uh, you know, even after paying their premiums are reluctant or even afraid to use their plans because they can't afford the cost sharing. So, you know, even though the AV calculator limits the kinds of choices that we can make, it's still important to recognize that beyond premiums, cost sharing uh, raises significant concerns re uh, regarding affordability and access for, for many Vermonters. <clears throat> Thought that was just a, an important point to make. And then third, regarding the premiums themselves, I think Wakely's modeling showed that these plan adjustments would result in premium increases of around 1%, give or take a few tenths of a percentage point. <clears throat> so it will be interesting to see when uh, the rates are filed in May, whether the rate increases are closer to historical norms or whether we again see double digit increases like we saw last year. And I'm sure we can hopefully all uh, assume that it will, uh, hope that it will be the, the former. And that's really all I wanted to say on behalf of the HCA. And so thank you for giving us the opportunity to comment today, Chair Foster. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Becker, on the affordability piece, does your website have some resources about um, the impacts of affordability and people's ability to pay uh, the cost sharing components of these? I think I've been on there and seen some materials. You know, I, I'm not sure quite off the bat if we do have any of those resources. Let me take a look for you and 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 get back to you if I, if I can. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. No. Great. Of course. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to public comment. Please use the raise your hand function, and I'll call on folks in the order in which their hands are raised. Mr. Carpenter, how are you, Walter? Hey, Owen. Hey. Well, my, hanging in there, my second Good. GMCB meeting of the week, so I won't go through withdrawal symptoms. You do You do as many uh, as I do. <laughs> Maybe more, right? <laughs> historically, definitely. Yeah, historically, you're right. Probably about 1,000. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to back up the legal aids comment and say that the only thing exceptional about American health care is how it screws the patient with these deductibles. Typical Walter comment. <laughs> we appreciate all of the comments we receive, and I appreciate you stepping up and, and making your comments, Walter, so thank you for doing it. Um, are there any other public comments? Okay. Um, hearing none, I'll, I'll move, and I move to approve the 2024 Qualified Health Plan Designs as presented by the Department of Vermont Health Access. I'll second. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm sorry, Dr. Merman, I didn't hear you. Aye, yes. Sorry, okay. I mean, you issues. No, no. That's fine. And I'm also an I, so the vote is unanimous um, and it, it carries. 
And well, we thank Mr. you. And it's uh, as I'm understanding it, there will be no modifications. We would go with the proposed designs in, in each case. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you for your presentations and making this very easy for us to understand a complex area, especially for myself as a new member. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you all. Great. Um, and with that, we'll turn to uh, any new business. Old business. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the motion carries. Everyone have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you.